Hey guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. And in today's video, we're going to be going over some wound closure and uh, suturing techniques. So stay tuned. So before we dive into suturing techniques, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about uh, wound closure and kind of the importance around wound closure, kind of give you a better understanding of wound closure. Um, majority of the time, any incision that you make on the body is going to consist of first your subcuticular layer, that's like your epidermal layer that you're going through uh, and that's most superficial. Just below that, we call it a subdermal layer which is kind of just below that subcuticular layer. Then we're going to have subcutaneous tissue. That's kind of like your fatty tissue. You're going to have, you know, some blood vessels in there and it's just generally really, really fatty, not really a lot of substance to that layer. And you can't really suture that layer very well because nothing will really take hold. And then you're going to have your muscle layer. Uh, a part of your muscle layer is you're going to have uh, kind of like an anterior fascia and a posterior fascia to your muscle layer. Your fascial layers of that muscle are what's going to have kind of like strength to the, to the sutures that you're using to close up that fascial layer and that muscle layer. Uh, if you're in the abdomen, you'll have peritoneum to close as well. Uh, but essentially those are the main layers that you're going to see in the body when you are uh, closing a wound. Now the main object of closing a wound is obviously to for allowing it to heal. We need to approximate the wound edges to, you know, enable it to heal properly. But even more so than that, our our object is to eliminate any dead space. And dead space is something that you may not see on the surface uh, because, you know, there may have been some space left inside the wound in a deeper layer that wasn't closed properly. And the body's natural reaction to that is when it sees dead space, it uh, fills it up with some type of fluid. It's like a serous fluid or, or something like that. And that can be a harbor for, you know, infections that could happen potentially later on down the road or a couple weeks down the road after wound healing. Uh, you may see like seromas, things like that. These are all things that could happen if you know, sutures are pulled through maybe on a, on, a, on a deeper layer that didn't really have the strength that you thought it had. It could pull through, uh, maybe the patient was up and walking around or possibly doing something they shouldn't have been doing and, you know, popped a suture or, you know, there's, there's many things that could happen uh, to create dead space and, and, you know, could be a harbor for infections but uh, we try and do everything possible to ensure it doesn't happen. All right, let's go on to suturing techniques. All right, so I have some fake skin set up here, kind of cut it, it was really hard to cut, and I tried to uh, color it in with some Sharpie so you can actually see it. We're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing a running subcuticular stitch. As you can see, this first bite I'm taking is deep to superficial. And then on the other side of the incision, once I get it through here, is going to be superficial to deep. So then when I, when I tie this down, it's going to be uh, burying the knot on the bottom side of the, uh, of the suture instead of on the top. And yes, I know I'm using a proline suture, that's why it's blue, but uh, normally we wouldn't use this on a running subcuticular stitch. Normally we would use uh, like a Vicryl or a Monocryl for closing skin. Only reason I'm using Proline on this is because it's highly visible and it shows up really well on the camera because of the, uh, the bright blue. So you can see on this uh, next step here, as soon as the knot is tied, I'm gonna hold the suture up with my, with my offhand and I'm gonna take the needle and go right underneath the knot and come right out of the apex of the incision. 
and pull the needle through. That ensures that the knot is buried deep down under, underneath and it gives me a good starting point at the apex of the incision to start my running subcuticular stitch. Now it's important to note when you are using or when you're doing a running subcuticular stitch uh, is that you really try hard to stay at the same level and the like the same layer. Uh, don't go too deep, don't go too superficial. If you go too, su too superficial, the suture is going to be, you know, coming out of the skin. If you go too deep, you're going to have these weird kind of folds of the incision as you close it and they're kind of going to like fold in on itself. So you really have to stay kind of at the same level and in the same layer uh, as, as well as you can throughout the whole uh, running continuous stitch. Now you can see right here I'm pulling the incision apart and you kind of see like a nice ladder of, of stitches coming across. That's what you want. you want. You want the stitches running at a 90 degree angle left and right, left and right, left and right and that's going to ensure a nice even uh, even closure as you're coming through. If, if you travel too far back on every bite, you might be coming, you know, those, those stitches as they're coming across the incision might look like they're at, you know, 45 degree angles or 25 degree angles or something like that. And it's going to kind of skew the, the incision as you close it. That might kind of look like, uh, instead of the incision kind of closing in a straight line, it may look more squiggly. Honestly, it, it doesn't really matter in the long run anyways, you know, once the sutures, uh, once the sutures end up absorbing and the incision kind of takes its, takes its time to even itself out and it'll end up looking like a straight, perfectly closed incision at anyways. But in the essence of, uh, you know, the patient seeing the pa the patient's base, you know, their how their surgery went on how beautiful their incision is as it's closed. It's the only thing that the patient sees, you know, after their surgery. So if they see a nasty looking squiggly line incision, they're going to be like, oh, the heck is this? This doesn't look right. Blah, 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 blah. So, you know, close it up nice, have a nice, nice closure. So it's nice and straight and uh, the patients love it. Now for the last two stitches here, I'm close to the uh, opposing apex of the, of the incision here. And it's the same thing, deep to superficial, superficial to deep. Pull the incision apart, see that nice, you know, ladder, that lattice coming across the incision. It's going to close up really nicely. So I have a nice big loop on one side and my, my uh, suture on the other. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit and then pull this, <clears throat> pull this suture through three times. And I will lock it by pulling the stitch through the loop and that locks it in place. Now you can see that the, it looks like the knot is really superficial, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take hold of the suture and very similar to the other side, I'm gonna go right underneath the knot, hold the suture up, go right underneath the knot, come out and that pulls the suture right on down. Bloop, it's gone. You don't see that knot anymore. It's beautiful. Everybody loves it and cut it off. That is a running subcuticular stitch. All right, the next stitch I wanted to show you guys is a purse string stitch. And purse string stitch is essentially a stitch that can be used to close like a, a circular wound. For me personally, where I see this purse string stitch used all the time is in open heart surgery. 
when uh, we are going on the heart lung machine and we need to cannulate you know aortic venous integrate retrograde any of those cannulas that we're putting into the aorta or the right ventricle svc ivc any of these places uh, we're putting in a purse string stitch first before we incise the vessel and and um, put the cannula in and then as we put the cannula in, we can pull up on the purse string to kind of pull the tissue and close the tissue around the cannula so it doesn't bleed the whole time while we're operating. There are other uses in general surgery, uh, maybe even some like small skin lesions, uh, you know, you might see in like an office or something like that, like a small little uh, carcinoma on the skin. Uh, they could use uh, a purse string type stitch for closure as well. Um, for me personally, when I am cannulating, because there are some times when I cut down on a, a femoral vessel and I do the purse string stitches uh, in the femoral artery in the femoral vein, um, you don't do full thickness on an artery. Uh, it's it's pretty much just. Uh, you don't want to you just don't want to do full thickness so you're just kind of skiving like the uh, adventitia as you uh, as you put each of those stitches in but as you can see here I've made the full circle around the incision I'm gonna pull up on both of these sutures to see how it kind of closes together this fake tissue is super plasticky and very difficult and my hands were slipping on the proline here so it was really hard for me to tie a knot but but you know normal tissue you know would close a lot easier than this uh, but you get the gist of it here as I'm tying the knot down you see that hole gets smaller and smaller and smaller and it will uh, it will close up any type of circular wound or incision uh, next stitch is going to be a vertical mattress stitch this vertical mattress stitch I see used all the time on uh, kind of open wound cases if you have like infected wounds that have come back uh, if you've debrided them uh, you partially close them maybe uh, some of the wound has been healed by secondary intention uh, but you still need to approximate the skin a little bit you can approximate it with something like this which is like a, a vertical mattress stitch now as you saw before I had the needle you kind of go far to far and you get like one big bite you try and get as much tissue as you can and then you kind of go near near uh, close to the incision site uh, and then you tie uh, both ends on one side of the incision and what's that what that's doing is it's it's grasping all of that tissue underneath the surface of the skin and it's just approximating uh, that area but not only that is it kind of everts the uh, everts the skin, the skin edges a little bit to help with wound healing on on infected cases as well. Uh, as you'll see in this, as I as I close this up, I do three stitches on the on this wound. This is a pretty small cut, um, but they they're spaced apart, and you want them spaced apart because. If it is an infected wound, you know you want it to drain a little bit. If it if it needs to drain, so you don't want the uh, you don't want the wound completely closed off 100%. You need it to still be able to drain. Uh, now there is also a second variant of this called the horizontal mattress stitch. I'll put a picture of the horizontal mattress stitch up here uh, in the upper right. I just I don't have time to do <laughs> all of these it would be a super long video it already is a super long video but uh, yeah so that's a horizontal mattress very similar uh, but you're just kind of you know going in and out on one side in and out on one side uh, versus this the vertical mattress all right guys so that's about it uh, we went over wound closure kind of anatomy of the wound the different layers of a wound and uh, what I think are three of the most uh, common types of suturing techniques, which are, uh, you know, just a simple subcuticular running stitch, uh, a purse string stitch, which is a little off the wall, and then your uh, horizontal mattress stitch, 
that you'll use for, uh, like I said before, like INDs and, and infected stuff or things that just need more retention, more strength. Um, as always, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, all that stuff. And I uh, really appreciate everything and all the uh, kind words and comments that I get. So comment down below. Let me know where you see these types of stitches or maybe you want to share some other types of common uh, suturing techniques that you see in the OR. Comment them down below for others to read. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.